Hi and welcome to my Sigma setup guide. These are my appliances and let's just see what need going in where. So we're starting off with an SD card, a USB adapter, a Bluetooth adapter, a USB dongle, a HDMI lead and a controller lead. So let's put these in. Now this is how I suggest you do it. If you have the USB adapter, we'll start with that first because this is very close to the HDMI. So we'll put that in and then we'll install the HDMI lead. And then next we'll put in the Bluetooth dongle. This is just so that you don't break the Bluetooth dongle or damage the port. After that, put in your USB joystick or controller, whatever you want to call it. And then grab yourself your little pen stick and put your little SD card in the bottom. Now let's just uh, pop that into the computer, shall we? So while it's flashing, it's reading. And when it stops flashing, it's writable. Right, so switching over to the computer, we're going to go to retroengine.diodo.com forward slash downloads so we can get your new image. We'll be putting this on the SD card. We do suggest that if it's still available, you use the Dropbox because it's a lot faster than the other link. This is around about 6.5 gig or thereabouts. It's around the 6 gig mark. So at the bottom when you go onto this page, you'll see that the old image um, is, at, is right at the bottom. Uh, there are a few other things like boot state, which um, allows you to take your phone out of the equation and add in the Wi-Fi in if you've got uh, a few issues with that. But there is improvements to the new image. And your new image is at the top. So grab them, grab whichever ones you think you're going to need. And then once you've got them, we're going to switch to retroengine.diodo.com forward slash markdown dash seven forward slash. And this will give you a comprehensive guide on how to flash your memory card if you do get stuck. Now before you can flash your card, you are going to have to unzip it. So use something like 7-Zip, which I found to be very good. Um, somebody did say WinZip will do it all in one because it's basically a zipped package in a zipped package and apparently WinZip will unzip both at the same time but it's a lot slower because it's doing two things at once but you know and then grab yourself uh, the program shown on screen and you can go from there the other option of course is to go to retro orange pie which is what the system is actually running and download yourself the light version of Orange Pie Light. That's a decision really you're going to have to make by um, reading comments, etc., regarding the new image because the old image got a lot of stick. So choose whether I'd just download both if it was me, just so you've got both on your computer. Obviously, I have these already, so I'm not going to need to download them. And now you have to decide whether you're going to go for the official Retro Orange Pie or the Retro Engine Sigma image that includes Orange Pie. And then take your USB, pull it out, take your SD card out, pop it in the back of your machine. Uh, it's spring loaded, so make sure it is all the way in. It should be pretty much flush. And that's you done with the USB dongle. Okay, so we're going to now have the HDMI lead plugged into your monitor and we're going to introduce power at this point. So make sure your uh, power lead is plugged in and it will automatically come on. And you will get the horrible guitar rift of the Retro Engine Sigma. 
Quite strange for a boot screen. You may get sudden impulse to play Guitar Heroes. Okay, pull up your phone. I'll pull your phone out your pocket because we need to go into the Wi-Fi settings. I know I'm purposely showing how hard it was for me the first time that I ever did this because when I connected to the actual retro engine, the page didn't pop up. So basically, forget the network that you auto connect to and choose retro engine instead. Now at that point, it should automatically bring up a browser page. Mine didn't for some reason. So I'm going to show you how I figured out. There are a couple of different ways of doing this. You can just open a browser yourself and go to retro.engine forward slash. That should do it. But I'm going to show you um, in advanced settings, there is, a, there is actually a link in there that shows the router IP. And if you click that, it will open the browser for you. This is on an Android Samsung Galaxy S7. Okay, so basically what you're going to do with this is if you click uh, advanced then it will it will actually show you the router IP in the phone. And then if you click the the blue link right at the bottom of your phone, voila, it will actually open the retro.engine page, which is pretty stupid. Now there is one other thing um Multiple browsers are one of the reasons, you know, if you've got them open on your phone still, like I do a lot, um, is one of the reasons why it doesn't work. Now, if you look at the bottom of the screen here, it, it says testing Wi-Fi underneath the Chinese writing, Wi-Fi connected. And then when it does connect, your little retro engine Sigma should now reboot and it should start booting and loading the image. This is done in real time, just so you've got a, a, a glimpse of how long it actually takes to bring the screen back up to you. So of course by this point you're going to be quite chuffed that you've started to get a screen of something that means something to you. It does take a short while to load, so just be patient. And there you go, you're in. Now the whole thing is is essentially run uh, via Retro Pi, so um, you obviously have a quick look around like I'm doing, and then when you come back round on yourself, you know, go into Retro Pi and you'll see the settings there. Now I'm going to show you a little issue that I had. Um, so if we go to Retro Pi setup, RP setup. It seems it seems that like it is still a little bit buggy at times. This now I'm pressing um, Y on my Xbox style USB controller, which Y seems to be Enter on mine. Um, I'm pretty sure you can configure that yourself. It's up to you, but um, I'll probably just leave it. And then when I want to sort of uh, start installing things. I have a. I'm instantly hit with an issue now. I'm not too sure the reason behind it, but um, this video was just to get you to this section. So, as you can see there, update failed. Now it could be that there is no update or something. I don't know. Maybe something's moved on GitHub. I'm not too sure. Um, so I mean, obviously, because I've been doing this video, um, I'm behind a lot of the other people. So you don't know, use the community. But the, the, the trick with doing it this way, by doing doing any loading actually in the screen, is that you actually get to, get to see the back end of what's going on. So if something doesn't work, rather than sitting on a silly splash screen like you did in the first place on the original image, you, you can actually see what's going on and if something fails. Uh, and then you still get your commands to come back out of it. 
So that is pretty much the video, guys. Um, you know, good luck with everything. I know we didn't expect it. We expected plug and play, and we didn't get it. So uh, I hope you liked the video, and I hope it helps above everything else. And maybe, just maybe, it's just made a new community. I'll uh, I'll see you guys later.